So what we did in assignment seven was make a colored illustration. I had two different versions, right, that I uploaded to my instructor documents. The most basic was this. It was just duotone color, cut edge, underneath black vector line work, right? I did a, a more complicated one with some special effects. This was the full spectrum color with color holes over the top of my black vector line work. So you see that the, the black line turned more into a kind of a purplish brown line. The eyes are glowing, the halo's glowing, and there's this kind of rainbow color going through the different colors. And I couldn't choose which one I liked more. I liked the clarity of this. I liked kind of the complexity of this. But there are more options out there. So if you actually want to print these images, we are limited to print technologies. And though print technologies are really good now, sometimes you want to embrace older print technologies. And so when you print something on a professional four color offset lithography press, which is how all posters are printed, all album covers, all magazines, this is actually what the printer is doing. They're printing with just four inks. And those four inks are cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And the code for that is CMYK. Some of you have accidentally gotten into CMYK mode in Photoshop and noticed that you can't save as a PNG from CMYK mode. So you have to change the mode back to RGB, red, green, blue. Well, this is what that mode is about. Because whenever you make something print ready for a professional press, printing press, you have to separate it into CMYK color. So here we have an image. This is uh, Chairman Mao, but it's done in just overlapping of different colored dots. But these dots are all digital. These aren't print dots. Here we have what the actual print separation looks like. So this is one of my sticker designs. This is my 3D Texas design. And it, what it does is it uses offset color separation. So I did a full color image, and actually I think I just took some, some um, found photographs of meat, and I kind of cut the shape of Texas out of it, and I warped it and, and shaded it a little bit, and then I separated it into cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Up close it looks like this. And then the offset comes in because I didn't align them correctly. So I have the yellow and the cyan and the magenta, especially the cyan and magenta, really offset from each other. And they're offset in such a way that if you have 3D, old school 3D glasses on, it makes the steak look three-dimensional because one is, the magenta is offset to match what the one eye would see and the cyan is set to match what the other eye would see. This is another one I did for California, kind of the two states I've lived the longest. Um, and this is California made out of vegetables, right? But you can see the offsets. Now, what's interesting about that is even though it's cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink, you see more colors than cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. And that's because the inks aren't 100% opaque. So as they overlap each other, you can see here where the yellow and the magenta overlap, you get this kind of really bright orange. Where the, the cyan and the... Um, yellow overlap, you get this green, right? And so you can get all those different tones. Here's another example. On and on. Another example. This is an illustration of origami with money. I wanted the money to have more complexity than just the flat colors of the greens. So I separated it, and you even have magentas in there. And you can see the yellow and the magenta, and I offset it. So this is old comic book technology. <laughs> when you are printing on news, newsprint, and newspapers still print this way, you only print 150 dots per inch, not the 300 that's professional. And you can actually see those dots when you look at the images up close. And then they look like this. So when I'm doing kind of comic book characters, sometimes I'll separate them this way so that they work for old printing. Now, there are other ways you can use the color separation without actually using the halftone dots for printing. So this just offsets the magenta and the cyan filter on this image, again, for a 3D effect with glasses of the skull. 
This does it for an album cover, and it uses cyan for the, the skeleton of the horse and magenta for the outside of the horse, so you can see both at once. Again, old comics. This uses this is kind of uh, showing the halftone dots in a vintage ad, and then this is a a new digital artist doing kind of a vintage retro poster for the season of Lost, where they go back in time, and so you can see how it's it's becoming a vocabulary of half toning and of color separating. Yeah, there are filters within Photoshop. If you go to Photoshop filter, you can do half tone filters but they're kind of a cheat and not very effective. So I'm going to show you how to do it for real. And basically what we're going to do is take your millions of color image and separate it into just those four colors. Now to make it work, they have to line up correctly. So each color and the black ink has a certain angle that you have to offset it by. So basically they're all done in what's called a half drop pattern. That's why they're called half-tone dots, where it's like bricks on a wall. And so one line is, is halfway under the next line. And the most common way to see that is at 45 degrees, and that's what black is, always. Then the other colors are 15 degrees off of that. Okay. And the reason they have to be offset from each other that way is if they were all at 45 degrees, they would just all print right on top of each other, and you just have mud. Right? So what you get when, when they're all layered up, and that's what the, the printing book I'm, I have passed around, it shows how you get what's called a Gaussian rose. And so these little roses appear where all the colors are there overlapping just enough to give you the color you want optically. And it kind of works like this. Right? This is what our computer screen can do, but this is how it has to be printed. This is the, the light primaries. These are the pigment primaries. This is just looking at a Gaussian rose and how it separates out into those four inks. Here's another, re and you see black is always at 45 degrees. So lots of ways we can look at it being used, right? So let's do this. You can even play optical illusion games with it once you're doing it digitally. Lots of fun. Okay. So I'm going to go back to assignment seven, and I'm going to open up my Photoshop file. And this is something you can use on text later, but this is a coloring thing. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take all of this that I did. This is my full spectrum color with color holds, special effect, kind of overdone image. What I'm going to do is flatten it with the background turned off or with the white background on, just so it's a white background. So I'm going to say layer flatten image. And you can do this along with me on yours if you like. I'll show you how easy it is. We're in Photoshop on our assignment seven finished colored spot illustration, our Photoshop document. First thing we do is flatten it. And then we save it with a new name. So file, save as, Carl Assignment 7, color spot illustration. I'm going to call it color separations test. And I want all of you to do this just to see how it works. It's up to you to decide whether you want to use it as part of your coloring solution or not. Okay, I'm going to keep it in Assignment 7. So now it's just one flat layer. Then what do you do? Well, I'll show you the hard way first, and then I'll show you the easy way, because I've actually programmed it into all of your computers in what are called actions. So I have an action that will do this all for you. But what does the action do? Well, first, it changes your mode from RGB to CMYK. So if we do that, then if I look under channels, it will separate out colors for me. So this is the inks, these are the black inks that are used. Notice how they're faded out in gray in some places. This is black with yellow. This is black with magenta. And this is black with cyan. This is black with cyan and magenta. And this is black with cyan, magenta, and yellow. This is black with yellow and cyan. <laughs> yeah. 
over and over. The reason I have to, I can't show you just one of them, except for the black, is that whenever you isolate one, it's just grayscale. But that's the cyan layer that's grayscale. So what if I wanted to get just the cyan dots for this image? Remember the dots. I wanted just the ones for the cyan. I wanted just, <laughs> just these dots that combined with the other colors will give me the full color image. Just these dots, the cyan. Well, then what do I do? I turn everything off except cyan, and then I say image mode grayscale. Okay. Then I say image, the problem is grayscale mode now still allows for grays. And printing doesn't, right? It's either a cyan ink or it's not. It's not a lighter or darker cyan. So then I have to go image mode bitmap, right? Because bitmap is only one or the other. And then the output, let's do professional printing output, 300. And how do I separate it? Halftone screen. That's the most common. That's what I've been showing you. I say, okay, now this is important. The frequency. How many dots do you want per inch? And I'm going to make the frequency really low, only about 20 dots per inch. And then the angle. And this is why I need that little handbook and I need you to know these angles. For cyan, the angle is 15 degrees. So I'm going to type in 15 degrees. And then the shape. Well, I want a perfect round shape. Then I say OK. And now I have a bitmap file, which is only black and white. But from a distance, it gives me all of those gradations that I saw. But I'm not done yet. Now I have to select all the white. I go back to layers. I have to go to image mode and go to grayscale at a one-to-one -one size ratio. It's the exact same image. And now because I want to fill this with cyan, I have to go to image mode, um, RGB color. Or I could do CMYK. And now I can select all the white space with contiguous turned off, and then select all the inverse, and then edit fill with a color. <laughs> I told you this is the hard way. And then find the color that I want for cyan. It's helpful to do only web colors. And you get kind of the most intense blue that way. And then fill it at 100%. Voila. So that's how I get my cyan layer. Then I simply do that with, with the black layer, but I do the black layer at 45 degrees, with the yellow layer, but I, do, but I do the yellow at zero degrees, and with the magenta layer, but I do the magenta layer at 75 degrees. And then I layer them all up together, and I get my color separation. So what's the easy way to do it? So for cyan and yellow are zero? Yeah, uh, for yellow, well, no, they all have to be different. They have to be at least 15 degrees off from each other. So cyan is 15 degrees, yellow is 0 degrees, okay. black is 45, and magenta is 75. Okay. Now, you can also say that cyan is, let's see, what's 15 degrees? 105 degrees off of 90. So there's all kinds of ways, but it would be the same angle either way. As long as you remember that black is 45 degrees and that the colors have to be at least 15 degrees apart from each other, you'll get, you'll get something that works. Yeah, excuse me. Okay, so going back to the beginning, this is the easy way to do it. You flatten it, you save it as something else, and then you go to Window Actions. And under Window Actions, you'll see a folder that says Carl Color Seps. You open up that folder with the drop down menu and you'll see cyan color separation. You click on that and then you press play. And all the steps I just did, it will automatically do for you. Right? And give you a cyan color layer on a new file. So, and I do it for yellow, I do it for magenta, I do it for black. Or you can just click on.